If you want to know how we got here, watch the previous video or read the description. Our objective now is to make the interaction and animation parts. We will use physics on the balls to update their position based on velocity. And we will use the distance formula to make the interaction part. We will also use request animation frame to make our animation. Let's start with the animation part. Our world will have an animate function. In here, we will request animation frames from the window. The idea goes, if you call a function inside of itself, it will create an infinite loop. But passing the function into request animation frame function makes it browser friendly. Now to see the changes in your frames, clear the previous one and draw again. Do that by typing c.clearRect. Pass in the values 0, 0,0, xlim and ylim to clear the whole canvas. We need to call the run function inside our animation loop. Don't forget to call the animate function outside as well. Doing this should render a static image. Now comes the motion part. Start by making a velocity property with x and y set to small random values. If you subtract 0.5 from the randomly generated values, it should also give you values in the negative direction. To get this moving, we need a function to be called each animation frame. Let's call this function update. In this function, we need to add the velocity components to the position components. If you call ball.update in your run function, the balls should start moving around. We have achieved proper animation. We are not done yet though. If you let this animation run for a while, the balls will go outside the view and never come back. So let's handle the boundary interactions. We will need to check four things. The first thing is, if the ball's x is less than 0, if the ball's x is greater than x limb, if the ball's y is less than 0, and if the ball's y is greater than y limb. In all these cases, we need to respawn the ball. So let's make a respawn function as well. In here, we want to randomize the ball's position and velocity. We have already written this part of the code, so I'll copy and paste it in here. Running this will assure that the balls never leave the view space. We're done with the animation part. Coming to interaction, we want the balls to interact with the mouse. So we need an event listener to look out for mouse movements. Write window.addEventListener mouse move and pass E into the function. If you console log out E, also let's stop the animation for now. Yeah, so you will see a mouse event logged. We are looking for the client X and Y values. Let's make a mouse variable in our world. This will have x and y values. We want to store the client x and y values in the mouse variable. Do that in the event listener. Storing this data is the first step. The next step is to check the distance. To do that, we will make a function in the world called check. In here, we will pass the mouse's position to every ball using this.balls.foreach ball ball.check. Make a function in the ball called check. We need to pass a value in here. In here, make a variable called distance. We will be using the distance formula between the ball and the passed value, which in our case is the mouse. Now comes the check part. We need to check if the distance is less than some threshold value. I am using 200, but you can use anything you want. Just for now, let's make the color become red if the mouse comes close to the ball. We want the world.check function to run only when the mouse moves, so write it inside the event listener. This is working nice. So now what we want to do is fool around with the radius. But first, let's store the actual value of the radius in some other variable. Now, to get the size to go up if the distance decreases, you can subtract the distance from the threshold value. Also, make it an absolute value, meaning it cannot go into negatives. If you notice carefully, many times, the balls are being permanently altered. We need to reset the ball's radius if the distance is greater than 200. To make things look better, I'm changing the radius's limit to 20. 
If you followed along and learned something out of this video, leave a like and smack that subscribe button. This video took me 43 hours to make. It had to be split into two parts because my computer was massacred by the editing process. If you have a question, leave it in the comments. And if you're having any trouble following, I've broken this video into chapters and I've also kept the line numbers inside. If you keep a track of that, you will know where you are. Bye.